Uh, thank you very much. Uh, the chair now recognizes uh, the gentle lady from California, Representative Kamala Agardov, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and thank you all for being here today. I have a couple of questions. I'd like to start with Dr. Vasquez. So I understand that as a scientist uh, and an advocate, you have been sounding the alarm about the harm caused by orphaned oil and gas wells for years. You sound like many of my constituents in Culver City uh, and in the Baldwin Hills area. Given your expertise, I would like to set the record straight on some of the misleading claims made today about bonding and the abandoned and orphan well crisis. Ms. Sagama claimed that the Department of the Interior said there were only 37 orphaned wells on federal lands and therefore there really is no problem. I think this is an extreme cherry picking of the data and covers up the way the oil and gas industry routinely leaves wells unplugged and polluting for years by hiding behind the definition of orphan. So Dr. Vasquez, can you explain what it takes for a well to be officially declared orphaned on federal lands? It's a complex process and I appreciate the question. First of all, previously it took seven years before the BLM would declare, declare a well that was not producing as um, idle. Now by legislation it takes four years. That's an improvement, but that's still a long time for a well to be out of production and not plugged and reclaimed. Following that, um, in order to be declared orphaned, the BLM pursues a chain of custody and ownership of leases to try and find a financially responsible party. Sometimes they're successful and that party reclaims, plugs the well and reclaims. Sometimes they're not. And in the absence of a sufficient bond, there's an incentive to walk away from wells rather than to exercise their responsibility to plug and reclaim the well. Thank you for that. And does the number of officially orphaned wells accurately reflect how many non-producing oil and gas wells are currently sitting unplugged and potentially polluting on public lands? It does not. And actually, the GAO study indicated that there were 5,100 uh, orphaned wells. And recent testimony by Nada Culver of the BLM indicated in 2021 that there were uh, 2100. So the number appears to be in great contention and that's probably because of problems with record keeping and the use of different terms to indicate wells that are not producing. So each of these wells, once they're out of production, offers the opportunity to leak methane and volatile organic chemicals into the atmosphere, risking public health, wildlife health, and climate change impacts. Thank you for that. You once again sound like so many of my constituents at the town halls that I host. Uh, I have the largest urban oil field in my district that is in the United States. And I, uh, we have had dozens and dozens of hearings in town halls and I'm listening to grandparents talk about putting metal stints in their seven-year-old grandchildren's bodies because of the after effects of living close to uh, oil fields where toxins are being emitted all the time and folks are shirking their responsibility uh, and evading the cost that it takes um, to do this kind of work and keeping people safe. So my next question for you is, how will BLM's proposed rule, including the updating bonding requirements, help stop these wells from polluting? The only way we can stop these wells from polluting is getting them plugged and reclaimed rapidly, and that is not happening. The imposition of a higher bond level, which is not as high as uh, they're looking at in Colorado for federal wells, will certainly incentivize the operators to take care of that responsibility quickly. It doesn't make sense to hold an, a well in uh, operation when it's not economically viable, and yet we see a lot of these wells just sitting idle without being reclaimed. And tell, us again why you think that's and tell us again why you think that's happening. The reason it's happening, in my opinion, is because the financial incentive to do the work required is not there, that uh, companies can just walk away and abandon wells without doing the plugging and remediation. If they have 
uh, a bond, then both the state and the federal governments for the wells involved have an opportunity to gather those funds and use them for plugging and reclamation. Thank you so much for that. And Mr. Chair, I yield back. Thank you very much. Before we go to Representative